Hey, what's going on? This is the Anime Man. And welcome to another episode of What the Fuck Japan, your daily, daily dose of weird, strange, what the fuck thing straight from the heart of Ramen Land. And today's topic is, I guess, a video that a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Considering that my video on me sharing my experiences on how shitty it was to be on Japanese TV went more viral than the simian flu, I guess I have no choice but to discuss some of the topics that were laid out in that video. Because as you know, I am a YouTuber, I am a slave to the viewer. Save me. Out of the few topics that I did discuss in that video, one of the most requested topics you guys wanted me to talk about is a thing that is rather unique to Japan, or rather unique to the Japanese workplace society. It's a little thing known as karoshi, which literally translates to, get this, death by overworking. I wish I was making that up. But unfortunately, it exists, and it is a serious problem in Japan. So much so that recently, they put the word karoshi into the Oxford Dictionary. They did it with Tsunami, and now they did it with Karoshi. That's how you know how serious this shit is. So in this episode of What The Fuck Japan, we will be dissecting and exploring the ins and outs of Karoshi, and why it is, in fact, a bigger problem than we all think it is. But it's a little bit of a big, broad, serious subject matter, and I couldn't do it on my own. So I decided to grab my good friend and culture expert, Gaijin Goomba, to help me through this rather bumpy ride. Take it away, Gigi. Thanks, Joey. Well, as some of you may know, before I started making YouTube videos, I was actually in the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program in Mie Prefecture for two years. Basically, it was my job to both teach English in a high school setting, and also create some diplomatic relations on a grassroots level in the community that I lived in. So, of course, I got to know my co-teachers and experienced what it was like to work within a Japanese environment. And let me tell you, it was rough. I guess it wasn't too bad for me, I mean I got to go home right after classes were over if I wanted to, but the other teachers not only had grading and lesson planning to do, but they were also responsible for managing the numerous student clubs. By the time all that was said and done, they were probably headed home at about 8pm, and since our morning meeting starts at around 7am, well that means they're pulling 12 hour days every day. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems like a lot of hours put into work in just one day. And to think that this could happen for months and months at a time. It's no wonder people are falling left and right. And honestly, that's not even the worst of it. I have personal friends right now who live in Japan who have claimed that they work 70 hours per week on average, and to those more unfortunate ones, there are even more hours of labor put under their belt. For example, in an International Labor Organization article on Karoshi, there were some really, really serious cases of Karoshi, or rather, overworking to the point that it led to these people's deaths. One of the more famous examples includes an anonymous man who was working at a major snack food company who worked for as long as 110 hours a week, not a month, a week and died from a work-related heart attack at the age of 34. Or how about the rather famous case for this one particular bus driver, whose death, which was also recognized as work-related, who worked 3,000 hours a year. If that already wasn't ridiculous enough, he worked that every year for 15 years straight. And surprise, surprise, he died of a stroke at the age of 37. I could keep going with some more examples, but I don't doubt your ability to Google, so I'll just leave it there. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh yeah, Joe, but every country I'm sure has people who work ridiculous hours at a time and you know just unfortunately die from overworking what's the big deal well if you're thinking that these are just rare instances in Japan you're unfortunately mistaken in fact not only do people die from just working ridiculous hours at a time but there are also unfortunate cases of karojisatsu or the act of committing suicide due to the physical pressure and the mental stress from overworking and mind you this isn't a thing that's hidden away in Japanese society. In fact, many news stations report on these deaths every now and then, while other entertainment mediums such as TV, movies, and magazines sometimes go and explore some of these concepts. In fact, coincidentally, we recently had an anime series, Relife, which openly explored this very concept. So with that being said, we have to ask the question, why? Why is karoshi so much of a thing in Japan, but isn't so much of a thing in other countries. Well, in my video where I raged the fuck out about my experience on Japanese TV, links in the description, I mentioned that the biggest point perhaps has to do with the Japanese economy. In order to sustain an economy, we need people working. If we don't have people working, society goes up in flames. So could we say that the problem lies within Japan's modern workplace? Well, hang on a sec there, Joey, because I personally don't think this is anything new at all. 
The concepts of putting your work before your personal life dates all the way back to Japan's feudal caste system of emperor and shogun, then daimyo, then samurai, then the artisans and merchants, and then the peasants. The idea is that you would place your daimyo over your own personal interests and your time, and in turn, the daimyo would take care of you and your family for the rest of your lives. The only thing that's happened here is daimyo are now CEOs, samurai are now middle managers, and peasants are now salarymen. The times may have changed, but the mentality has not. And while that seems like a horrible way of life from a Western perspective, remember that Japan is a society focused on the greater good of the group, not just the individual. But the problem of Karoshi is a big, big personal problem and it extends far and beyond the individual. It's not the death of an overworked salaryman. It is the center of a web of problems that, in my opinion, are the driving force behind much of Japan's social problems. I think back to the Taikasai Sports Festival or the Bunkasai Culture Festival with my kids. These were huge events with the families of the students very much encouraged to come. But in my two years of working in two different schools, not once did I ever see one of my kids' dads show up. I could tell it was an issue because one of my co-teachers actually began the conversation of how much it sucks that these kids never get to see their fathers. I was told that most of the time, my kids' fathers would work an average of 12 hours a day, 6 days a week, and the only chance they even got to see their dads was maybe Sundays if they didn't have to work overtime. And that's not just hurting the father, that's hurting the entire family. Sons and daughters who rarely get to have a father figure in their life. Men and women who maybe get to spend a few hours a day with their significant other. It's no wonder Japan is having a crippling problem with relationships and sex. Why bother getting married and having kids if you don't get to experience it together? Mom's just gonna be home watching over the kids for 20 years, and Dad's gonna be working 60 hours a week. Look, I'm just one guy here, but if you want to know why the lifestyles of otaku, hikikomori, and neat are on the rise in Japan, look absolutely no further than the insane, inhuman amounts of time that people are expected to work. So anime wasn't to blame after all. Got him! In my opinion, I think the biggest reason as to why Japanese salarymen spend so much time at work has to do with their views on efficiency versus time. Now, of course, this may vary from company to company, but having interned at a proper Japanese company in Japan, and from what I have seen in a general consensus, it seems a person's value within the workplace and as an individual working member of society ultimately boils down to how long a person has worked. Think about it as kind of a fucked up popularity contest. Oh, oh, boss, look at me, look at me, look at me. I worked four hours over time today. The guy, the guy next to me, motherfucker only worked two extra hours. Aren't I just a valuable person in this office and in society in general? Uh, yeah, here's the problem, Japanese salaryman guy. Nobody gives a fuck. In my opinion, you can work for as long as you want, but at the end of the day, it's about whether you did the job at all and how well you did that job. It's all about that quality versus quantity. Wow, that seems to apply to everything in life. I find it extremely ironic that such a tight society that values efficiency and convenience so much seems to fall behind in terms of convenience within the workplace. Yeah, I get it. It's super convenient because you can go to a 7-Eleven to pay your bills. But at the same time, why does it take two fucking weeks to send a letter to me about something that you could have just sent me via email? You have an internet business going on, but I can only order things through fax. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is 2017 and Japan still uses fax. There are probably some of you watching this that don't even know what the fuck fax is. Kinda seems a little ass backwards, don't you think, Japan? Oh, dude, when summer and winter vacation rolled around, the kids didn't have to come to school, but the teachers sure did, rain or shine. Granted, it was a time to get a lot of extra work done, like prepping for next semester's lessons, but by and large, people weren't really super focused on work. There was a lot of book and newspaper reading, conversations about last semester, and joking about next semester. We were all clocked in, but not really doing that much. I remember that a lot of other Jets felt like it was a waste of time, but on reflection, maybe to them that was a break from the insane hours they put in. Okay, granted. But if they wanted a break, then why don't they go spend it with their existing or potential family and friends? See, that's the problem. There's a whole lot of talking, not a lot of doing. They should come to work when they want to work, work while they're there, then go home when they're done. I just think it's kind of fucked up to think that some Japanese people will put overwork hours and pay above their family and friends. Yo, money makes the world go round, but 
You gotta look after your family and friends, bro. As Gaijin explained earlier, the problem goes way back to the feudal days, which suggests to me this problem exists due to the natural way that Japanese society works, or more specifically, the nature of tateshakai. It's basically a form of hierarchy, the whole senpai versus kohai spiel, which I'm sure you're aware of if you've seen any high school anime. In order to stay within the circles of Japanese society, you have to conform to that group mentality. If you do something or say something that's not accepted, acceptable in the societal or social sense, you're treated as an outcast pretty quickly and pretty damn hard. Like in any society, if you're a little bit strange, then a lot of times people are more accepting to it. They just label it as, oh, that's kind of strange, but whatever, I'll let that person do their thing. But in Japan, it's not that simple. If you're even just a little bit outcast or a little bit strange from the norm, you have to instantly hide underground until it becomes popular or popular again. And the societal pressure of doing everything your senpai says might be a valid reason for karoshi. Because think about it, if your senpai tells you to stay back and continue working or to do their work for you, then you kind of don't have a choice. When I was in your age and your position, I did the exact same thing for my senpai. So now that I'm your senpai, you have to do the exact same thing. While looking at it on the surface, this may seem like a valid reason to push all your work towards your kohai. At the same time, it's slightly bullshit. I think a workplace should be the hub of teamwork. Where everybody does their best to help each other get the job done quickly and efficiently. Get it done in the best way possible in the most minimal amount of time. While you might be thinking, Joey, that's a rather utopian situation you're thinking of, it's not too far from the truth from a lot of Western companies and workplace societies. And I'm sure those kinds of societies do also exist in some Japanese companies, but unfortunately, it is more of the minority. But hey, that's just me. I'm sure workplace and human values change from person to person. So I'm not telling everybody in Japan to bear the same mindset as me. But if the current set of values and the system that is placed in hand is leading to people, and quite a large amount of people dying from overworking or killing themselves from the pressure and stress from overworking, then you need to change the system. In the long run, this is going to lead to more and more problems, not just at an individual level but also at a societal level. I love you Japan, I really do. I love so much about you. But I just see shit like this sometimes and I just have to stop everything. Just inhale and say, what the fuck Japan? But hey, now you know that not every society in the world is perfect and the Japanese society is definitely far from it. But I'd love to know your opinions about this whole topic. What do you think is the leading cause to things like karoshi and karojisatsu? And how do you think we can solve it? I want you guys to let me know all that kind of stuff in the comments below. And hey, while you're in the Japanese societal mood, why don't you head on over to my fam Gaijin Goomba's channel and check out the video we did on why Japan loves high school so much. I'm just saying, you might be surprised by the answer. Also, don't forget to check out Gaijin's other videos too. If you're into anime, gaming, and Japanese culture analysis, then you'll definitely get into his stuff. Also, if there are any other news, topics, or things about Japan or the Japanese society that makes you go, what the, the fuck? Then suggest them to me either in the comments below, or you can link me the articles and news pieces or images that you see over on my Twitter. And if you're lucky, I might talk about it in the next episode. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. As always, like and favorite if you enjoyed.